pinpoint asteroids in orbit and hurl y'all thousands of miles an hour towards it, towards it, towards it, towards it. Gleam. The guy who vehemently claims he's not a flat earther. Wow, what would ever give me the idea that Gleam was a flat earther? It's definitely not the fact that everything that comes out of his mouth pertains to the earth not being a globe in some way. Gleam claiming he's not a flat earther is just like a guy who claims he's not a Cowboys fan, but drives around with Dallas Cowboys stickers all over his car and wears cowboy jerseys, t-shirts, and hats every day. I told you, I'm not a Cowboys fan. The guy who, after getting completely destroyed, proceeds to write 1,000 word essays in comment sections along with links that 9 times out of 10 debunk his arguments altogether anyway. The guy who claims my channel is just full of lies in order to deceive people into believing the earth is a globe. Well, it seems as though Gleam is still butthurt about a few videos I made a few years ago. He recently got so triggered for me pointing out the obvious flaws in this graph he presented to me years ago that he threatened to copyright strike my channel. Unfortunately, that didn't work out too well for you either, didn't it? That seems like a reoccurring theme nowadays. Ever so often, he'll bring up how he claims I deleted a portion of his maths on this graph he created which is supposed to represent angles to Polaris. We'll go over this absolute debacle in a minute. He'll also bring up how he thinks this reflection of clouds on the water are actually clouds that somehow formed just above the ocean, in the middle of the day, in a tropical climate, and are blocking my view of the horizon, and that I'm somehow lying about the obvious curve in this picture. To get a full understanding of his argument, Let's go back a few years to when I made this video. Gleam sent me this graph that he claimed proved that angles to Polaris as they are on the globe could work on flat earth. Again, this coming from a guy claiming he's not a flat earther. My original question which never got answered was, where did he come up with the distance to Polaris? Well, he basically used the radius of the earth as the distance to Polaris. Not sure why he chose this, but let's go with it for now. If you take a closer look at his graph, it has four columns. Latitude, distance from that latitude to the North Pole in miles, apparent altitude of Polaris in miles, and the hypotenuse. So we essentially have three points of a right triangle from each latitude on flat Earth, the North Pole, and Polaris. In reality, the angle at which Polaris is viewed above the horizon will always match your latitude, and I personally tested this when I lived in Hawaii. So let's test my observation using Gleam's graph. Oahu was about 4,747 miles from the North Pole at latitude 21.4 degrees north. If we look at the graph, it looks close enough. But herein lies the problem. Remember that we're dealing with a right triangle on flat Earth from the observer to the North Pole to Polaris. Over a flat plane, if Polaris is 3,959 miles above the North Pole, Trigonometry says that at a distance of 4,747 miles, Polaris should be 39.8 degrees above the horizon. But upon observation, it's not. It perfectly matches my latitude, which I measured to be 21 degrees. This is a point of contention that a lot of flat earthers continue to get wrong, which is no surprise. I mean, it's really simple. If the Earth is flat and celestial objects are local, then we could essentially use a right triangle with a flat baseline, which flat earthers love to use, to figure out the elevation above the flat plane these local celestial objects actually are. The simple fact is, objects at a fixed point above the ground behave differently while moving away on a curved surface versus a flat surface. Let's look at another flaw in Gleam's graph. In trigonometry, a triangle with two 45 degree angles will always have two sides that are the exact same length. But according to Gleam's graph, at 45 degrees latitude, the distance to the North Pole is 3,107 miles, which is shorter than the original height he proposed. So that means Polaris would have to physically drop in altitude 852 miles from 3,959 miles to 3,107 miles in order to make this graph work. He covers this up by claiming these are all apparent altitudes. Gleam seems to think that calling them apparent altitudes somehow makes them valid. And here's the craziest, most glaring problem with this graph. All of these points are virtually the same height above the ground. 
So that means this height of Polaris above the North Pole is the same as this height and this and this and this. And here's my final question, Gleam. How can Polaris be multiple different elevations at the same time, measured from different places on Earth? Here's the short answer, Gleam. It can't. And you, supposedly being pretty good at math, should have figured out years ago that it makes absolutely no sense. And you wonder why we laugh at you and don't take you serious. Once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. And please check out the rest of my videos if you're interested. And as always, peace. Pinpoint asteroids in orbit, then hurl y'all thousands of miles an hour towards it, towards it, towards it.